Our next lesson is graphing linear equations using intercepts. So again, we're going to graph linear equations. However, we're going to look at a different method on how to graph them. So what are intercepts? Well, an intercept is where the graph crosses an axis. Linear equations form lines and have two intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So the x-intercept is where, where the line crosses the x-axis. And the y-intercept is going to be where the line crosses the y-axis. So the last lesson, we looked at graphing functions or equations by plotting points. And if you recall, we made a table and came up with a list of points and plotted all those points to make our graph or to form our line. Well, we really only need two points in order to graph a line, and the easiest points to find are the x and the y intercepts. How do you find an intercept? Well, to find the x-intercept, we're going to substitute 0 in for y and solve for x. And to find the y-intercept, we'll substitute 0 in for x and solve for y. So we're making two separate equations, and we will find two separate points to plot on our graph, and then connect those two points to make our line. So in our first example, it says graph the following equation using intercepts. We have the equation y equals 6x minus 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two columns. I'm going to have my x-intercept and I'm going to have a y-intercept. Alright, so first looking at the x-intercept we said we're going to plug 0 in for y and solve for x. So looking at our equation, which was y equals 6x minus 6, plug 0 in for y and solve for x. So we plug 0 in, we get 0 equals 6x minus 6. Now this is solving a two-step equation like we did earlier this year. I need to add 6 to both sides, and I get 6 equals 6x. Divide by 6, I get x is 1, which means my ordered pair would be 1, 0. Now for the y-intercept, I'm going to again take that equation, y equals 6x minus 6, but this time I'm going to plug 0 in for x and solve for y. So I'll have y equals 6 times 0 minus 6. Well, 6 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. So this means my ordered pair here would be 0, comma, negative 6. All right, now it's time to make our graph. So first point, 1, comma, 0. Starting at the origin, I go over 1, and I make a point. Then for my other next point, 0, negative 6, I don't go left or right, I just go down 6. And make a point. Then using your ruler, you want to connect those two points, draw a straight line, and draw arrows on either side. So the key here is I made two points. X-intercept gave me one point, Y-intercept gave me the other. If you look at the graph we just made, you'll notice that here's my x-intercept of 1. At 1, my line crosses the x-axis. Here's my y-intercept of negative 6. At negative 6 is where the line crosses the y-axis. It is not, I do not plot the point 1, comma, negative 6. I plot 1, 0, and 0, negative 6. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next example. And I know I have a typo here. On your paper it says y equals 1 half x plus 8. So I'm just going to change this to 
to an 8. All right, so same steps as the last one. We're going to find our x-intercept, and we're going to find our y-intercept. Writing with these stylus, my handwriting doesn't always look so well. All right, so first finding our x-intercept. We have the equation y equals 1 half x plus 8. I'm going to plug 0 in for y and solve for x. So I have 0 equals 1 half x plus 8. Then subtract 8. Now I have negative 8 equals 1 half x. Remember, to solve for a variable where there is a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm multiplying negative 8 by 2 and getting negative 16. So my x-intercept is negative 16. Alright, for y-intercept, taking same equation, y equals 1 half x plus 8, this time plugging 0 in for x. Well, 1 half times 0 is 0, 0 plus 8 is 8. Y-intercept of 8. Now, you can write the ordered pair if you want, like for my x-intercept, that's really the point, negative 16, comma, and our y will be 0. And for my y-intercept, that's the point 0, comma, 8. Or you could just think, all right, making two points. Go on your graph where x is negative 16. So we're going to the left 16. Now, if you count there, you realize I don't have 16 spaces. And that's okay. We can count then by twos. Now, if I count by twos on the x, I'm going to count by twos on the y. So I'm really going to go over only eight spaces, which puts me right here. So that's my x-intercept. Then I go to my y-intercept of eight. So remember, we're counting by twos, so I'm really only going up four. Put a point. Connect those points with your ruler. Whoops, that wasn't so good. Let me try that again. Here we go. All right. Much better. All right, don't forget, draw arrows, extend your lines. All right, last example. We have 3x plus 4y equals 12. And you might notice that the third example is in a different format than 1 and 2. And actually, a problem that's in this format, where we have the x term plus or minus y term equal to a number, this is the ideal setup for solving these types of problems. Like You can find x and y intercepts to graph any type of linear equation, but when they're set up like this, it is e the easiest method is to find your x and y intercepts. So just like before, we're going to find our x-intercept, and we're going to find our y-intercept. So x-intercept, plugging 0 in for y. So we'll have 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. When I simplify that, I get 3x equals 12, divide by 3, x is 4. y-intercept, so this time we're plugging 0 in for x, so 0 times, sorry, 3 times 0 plus 4y equals 12. Simplify, we get 4y equals 12, divide by 4, y is 3. So those are my points, my two points going over our graph. So let's go plot a point where x is 4. And let's plot another point where y is 3. And then we're going to connect those two points. All right, let me try that one more time. So hopefully you're using your ruler and doing a little better than I am with connecting your points when it gets to that point part. All right, well, I'm just going to let it go. So anyway, connect your two points with a ruler. Your line should go through your two points. 
remember to extend it and use arrows on both sides. All right, now you're ready to do the worksheet associated with this lesson. Good luck.